I would like to start this video with a short story. I've been using Linux for more than 20 years now and my biggest problem with it has uh, been its uh, power management. So for example, if I plug out the power uh, outside of, out of my laptop right now, it will keep running uh, in performance governor and it will run its maximal potential and power, which will of course negatively reflect on the battery life. And there are a lot of tools uh, which allow you to, for example, manually switch uh, to power safe or performance governors, and they require you to usually uh, toggle them manually. Uh, yeah, which I never liked this approach, as I always wish this was an automated process. So idea how to fix this was already brewing uh, inside of my head for some time now. So some... Uh, three, uh, almost four years now, bought a new uh, X1 Carbon. Uh, and uh, as much as I loved it, I also hated it at the same time because its power life was pretty bad and because there was a constant uh, battery drain. Besides this, uh, it would also choke if I was watching uh, YouTube videos in 4K uh, because its CPU was constantly throttling. So uh, soon as I bought it, uh, so because it was almost New Year's, I was off <laughs> for 10 days, uh, and I thought, why don't I just create a tool that will help me uh, fix this problem? Uh, and well, that's what I did. I uh, In these 10 days, I managed to create this uh, tool, and I released it on January 3rd, 2020 here, and of course on GitHub also, uh, and uh, as an open source uh, tool. So uh, this tool uh, would basically uh, automatically switch between power governors based on CPU utilization, based if laptop was charging or not, CPU usage, uh, load, temperature, and even if it was running on battery and was still using power save governor, but CPU usage was high, it would kick in performance governor with turbo boost on until these tasks uh, were complete. So ultimately it would allow you to extend your battery life to the max without making any compromises on uh, on the performance. So even if, uh, I would even argue, even if you're not running uh, uh, Linux on laptops and on your desktop, there's people who are actually doing this, uh, it could still help you because it would uh, it could lower your po uh, power consumption and your electricity uh, costs, for example. Where I would really see this uh, reducing costs is, for example, if it was running on uh, on servers uh, in a, uh, on a data center. Uh, so, and besides the blog post, I also released a YouTube video basically demoing uh, how the tool worked and how it works exactly is more uh, explained in this video. I'll also link it in the description if you are interested in taking a look. So right after, soon after the tool was released, uh, the whole thing exploded. On GitHub, uh, it got a lot of traction. On, uh, on Twitter, it was getting a lot of traction because it was really helping people. It really did what it was supposed to do. Like, um, I, I never used to get a, this kind of a response on Twitter, for example. And even it was a trendi trending uh, as number one on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Hacker News, which I thought it was just huge. Uh, but basically, that uh, after that, rest is history, which leads me to the current day, to uh, sorry, to present day. So today, in less than uh, four years, uh, this tool has gathered. It has four thousand two hundred uh, stars on GitHub, which I think is absolutely massive. It has uh, sixty-five contributors, uh, and it has. 42 releases with a big V2 uh, 2.0 being released today and that's why I'm making this video today because since the original video was made there have been huge number of features and improvements that were made and the original video uh, it's like running literally a Python script at this point and it only has a monitor live and install uh, at this point so uh, that's uh, what I wanted to basically showcase. So what does the big uh, 2.0 bring? What are the changes that are there now? So 
after I installed uh, after I installed uh, Auto CPU Fract with the installer, of course, after I uh, cloned the repo, uh, it's available as a binary, and uh, I can see the list of options. So, for example, monitor, of course, uh, option is still there because this just allows me to monitor uh, what would this tool do, suggesting to set Turbo Boost off, for example, based on the consumption, but without making any actual changes to, to your system uh, yet. Uh, so it's kind of, yeah. Uh, then there's also Live. Live will basically make the changes it thinks it needs to make, and it will do the recommendations and optimizations live for you, uh, but as soon as you restart the computer, uh, the process will stop and you'll be, uh, yeah, without a CPU freck again. So uh, that's why you have the install option, which will install the daemon and it will permanently do automatic CPU uh, optimization. So how you would normally do this is uh, using install option. But now with uh, auto CPU freck 2, uh, there's also an icon there's a desktop entry. So if I run this, and if I run uh, install, I can also inst install it using a GUI, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, this will take a bit longer because underneath it, it's doing a lot of things, installing the daemon, which uh, you can see if you run the install option, you can see what, exactly what's happening because uh, in CLI it's more verbose. So the app is, uh, yeah, the daemon is installed, the app can now close and pre, uh, please reopen it. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna rerun it here. And uh, yeah, that's, we have the GUI now. So this output would be the same as you would see with, for example, stats. So this is uh, the same output that you're getting here. Uh, and now, of course, I think this is very useful because uh, now that uh, the daemon is installed, I can just, oh, I already have it pinned. But yeah, this is closed for whatever reason. I don't need to uh, start the terminal each time and see what's happening. I can just uh, run uh, auto CPU freck and I can see what's happening. Uh, and uh, I can also do this, but I'll get to this later. And there's not a lot of options. You can uh, remove the, 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 the daemon and uh, you can see about. So big tool uh, made with love, of course. Uh, so uh, to get back to the, to the list of options, then of course, uh, there's, um, there's remove, which will remove the, 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 the daemon, which you can also use uh, do through GUI. Uh, then there's another big feature which has been released as of recently, which is update. So uh, this was uh, only possible, for example, if you're running uh, with certain package manager, managers. But now, even if you install it with Auto CPU uh, Freck uh, installer with, uh, from Git, you can run update and it will check if there are any updates and if there are updates, it will allow you to update it, the tool automatically. Please note that all of these options are uh, described as part of uh, the Git repo and uh, for example, uh, how to install the, the auto CPU freck. Uh, I, I recommend using the installer, uh, how you can configure it, uh, how you, different modes that I'm now describing are literally described here. So you can also, if you miss something, uh, you can go back and uh, look on your own. So going back to the, to the options, stats, we just went over the stats. Uh, force. So this is an option that was introduced, well, relative, uh, well, a long time ago, actually. But it can force you to use power save or performance. Because, not, again, beauty of auto CPU freck is that it will automatically do uh, the governor switch or tur turn turbo boost on and off depending on the certain criteria. But if you want to, I don't know, you're you're doing something really heavy, you want to have that toggle, like please force to run uh, in performance now, it will do that and it will not try to do this automatically. So same thing as here, for example. So uh, this is default behavior where automatically it's setting to use performance governor. But for example, I know I'm going to be doing something very, very resource intensive. I can switch to performance and uh, now it will tell me that it also it's, uh, it's uh, yeah. So uh, see, it's setting to use performance governor. So it's using the force flag basically, which is 
uh, explained here in the, in the C CLI. Uh, another useful option, so this is more if you're into configuring it or really to your own needs, you know what you're doing, those kind of things. Another big one, which is uh, auto CPU frec, uh, it has a config file. So uh, what this allows you to do is, uh, is it will allow you to, for example, set a, a C, uh, auto CPU frec uh, config file. And here, for example, you can set the turbo to, for example, be always on. Like no matter what's happening, I always want it off, uh, on or off for that matter. Or I want it always to run in performance governor. For example, uh, I know that uh, my cores uh, can go uh, to uh, like uh, the minimum uh, CPU frequency will be 400 megahertz. I never want it to go like below 1000, for example. You could do this with the with the config file. Uh, again, this is something if you really know what 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 you're doing, for example, uh, in this case. Um, what else is there? Uh, debug debug uh, option is just there because uh, whenever you're uh, uh, submitting a, a issue, uh, basically I can show this uh, and. If you have any issues, please just go to issues and create a new issue, of course. But the, the, here you will be asked to uh, do, paste this uh, debug output, which uh, helps me and other contributors figure out what your problem is. Without it, the, the, the issue will be uh, closed. So please keep this in mind. And what else is left? Uh, version, yeah, version just shows the version of auto CPU frec uh, that we're using, and uh, it can also help so you know which which tag uh, Git tag is uh, running on, and uh, there's of course also the donate option. Uh, yeah, I would of, of course encourage you to do this. Uh, there uh, there are two ways that you can help this project either financially or co code contribution. Uh, financially you can do it via PayPal or Bitcoin for example but what I prefer even more is code contribution so basically if you have any ideas how to fix this tool or you have a problem feel free to make the code changes create a pull request and you will uh, be uh, uh, you will be credited for all of the work that you do as part of the release pages uh, I, I really make sure that even if it's a simple README update, you'll get credit for that. And uh, that's been the case for every release of Auto CPU Freck so far. So, uh, as I really want this uh, project to uh, keep growing and uh, yeah, helping people. Um, and I think those are all of the options that I wanted to talk about, with this one probably being one of my favorites because. I had a vision to have GUI for so long, and uh, now it's finally here, so I'm really happy that, uh, that it's there. So uh, if you're new to the project, I hope uh, this has uh, explained a thing or two to you, uh, and uh, you'll find it useful. Uh, if you're already using it, I hope uh, I brought you up to date with all of the new features. Uh, again, if you have any ideas, please feel free to contribute to the project. You'll be credited for your work again. And in the end, the most important thing is that I would like to thank to all 65 contributors who made all these releases possible over the past almost four years. Because without you, a lot of this would not be here. So uh, thank you. And um, it's been a great uh, run so far. So uh, I'm looking forward to what the future, uh, future hold, uh, holds for this project. Enjoy.